don't do that, chums, and as I, Captain of the Steves, yes. And I'm playing No Man's Sky. We're playing the Cartographers. Expedition. This is Expeditions Revisited. This is the third expedition. Yes, awesome fun. So we're going to be jumping in. I say awesome fun. Last episode, I actually said this phase three could be a walk in the park because we've already done some of the badges. Not true. Then it's going to be freaking hard. And there's a good reason why. This planet is covered in freaking carbon. It has no ferrite dust. It has... I've managed to find like four rocks. Four different types of rock. One in a cave. Uh, one in the ocean. And two on the land. And I can't find any other rocks for love nor money. So yeah, trying to find the minerals is like an impossible freaking mission. Now all that said, I have found a load of ancient bones. And I only need one more to actually pop the badge for that. But guess what? That badge isn't in phase three. <laughs> No, it's not. Right, okay. Brilliant. So we just popped a badge that's in another phase. Maybe the next phase might be easier. But I don't want to say that just in case it's not. <laughs> because this one really threw me. This must have taken me about two hours to do all of this. And I've shrunk it down into a half hour episode. Next, I went to the oceans. And I figured I'd get the... Um, a photososphate or whatever it was. Yes, the weird ingredients we need to fix our engines. And while I was under the water, I started scanning creatures. Now, if I manage to scan all the underwater creatures, I'll pop the fauna badge. But I can't find the last underwater creature. I've been in deep oceans, shallow oceans, ponds, all sorts. I can't freaking find this blinking creature to save my life. No, I can't. I also can't find the underground cave ones. No, and I've been in loads of caves. <laughs> I can't do the rocks and I can't do the fauna. Not on this planet anyway. So you know what? I might pop a couple of badges for a few of the other phases and hopefully manage to take off in this episode. Yeah. And um, get to another planet. Because that's the only way I'm going to get the rocks. And that's the only way I'm going to get the, uh, the rest of the fauna. Because I can't find the underground fauna. Yeah. And I can't find the last remaining fish fauna. No, I can't. But I can get this uh, catalyst Oh, crystallis, phosphate, whatever it is. I got that, anyway. You just pick it off one of those. You know when you're near them, because you see the vents blasting up and the whole screen shakes and stuff. When it starts to sort of, yeah, start to rumble, make sure you get out of the way, because it does a lot of damage. Yeah, crystalline phosphate. There we go. Awesome. Right, so we should be able to fix all of that once we get back to my ship. Lovely jubbly. Nice. But then um, we do need to make a couple of these. In fact, we've got to make three for our multi-tool to get the uh, visor installed so we can scan for hot spots and all sorts of other shenanigans. There's one of the rocks. Yes, I now have four rocks discovered. <laughs> I can't find any more than four. Honest. Mm. So mind-blowingly crazy. I mean, look, there's loads of rocks on the bottom of the seabed, but they're all the bloody same one. So, I have no idea. If you go onto the log page and look at the actual planet itself, it says that it's got 18 different minerals. It fudging hasn't. Or if it has, they're freaking elusive. Or they're invisible. They've got cloaking devices, these rocks. Right, now I am hitting up quite a lot of these checkpoints. So, in between my base and where my ship is, I've been going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And, uh, yeah, I found a few different buildings. I tried to meander different paths. And there's quite a lot of buildings on there. Some of them are just flags in the middle of nowhere. And you just hit it up. Bang. Yeah, lovely. So I've got a load of navigational data as well. I found a load of navigational data in the wild, too. So once I get to a station, I can buy a load of maps. But you do get awarded a load of maps every time you pop a couple of badges in the next couple of phases. So there we are. So something else you need to latch on to is these caches. So buried cache. Head on over to there, yeah, bury cash or bury cachet, call them what you like. I go for cachet, it's the French word, it's a French word in its origins, so cachet. Yes, but a computer cash, I kind of call that cash. It's a bit weird, yeah, I'm a little bit odd, yeah, you may have noticed. Anyhow, let's head on over to the buried cachet. <laughs> It sounds potter anyway, doesn't it? Let's head on over to the buried cache. Dig that up. And uh, yeah, we'll be on our way, hopefully. And yeah, you only need to get something like four of these or something. So dig up a couple of these caches and it pops another badge. I think they've been messing with the actual turn circle of the freaking uh, mech. I can't turn him when I'm walking. I have to jump and turn in the air now. If I try and turn him while I'm walking, he just carries on doing his own thing. Just goes in a straight line. 
I don't know whether they've tweaked something, but he feels a bit janky now, and where he didn't before. I can control him quite well before. Now I can only control him in the air. So, yeah, I've been using him a lot, and it's a little bit weird, to be fair. I don't know what's going on there. Right, so I'm just dumping out some of the stuff that I really don't need in my inventory space, and uh, pressing on with what's at hand. So I'm going to stick down my portable refiner. Now, we've got to turn quite a lot of normal ferrite dust into the pure ferrite and then into magnetised ferrite and stuff like that so yeah i've got that to do and uh, there's a few other materials that i want to process too but it's the magnetized ferrite that i really need heck yes it is right now this is only going to give me 30. i need 40. i need 40 and there's not a lot of rocks to be shot on this planet is there but we're going to go look for a rock the elusive rocks of this world yep and we're heading over this way because i i, I do remember seeing a couple of boulders up on the hill sort of where my ship is just past it up there so i'm going to run up there and hopefully they're still there i can't imagine them going anywhere to be fair because they're, they're freaking giant boulders so we'll go grab that ferrite from there and come back stick it in our per in our portable refiner and hopefully get some more magnetized ferrite so we can make a shed load of those sort of like resonators hercules because we need like three of them for my multi-tool and we need one to fix my ship so yeah i, I, I need more than just the one so let's plonk that in there and I have got normal ferrite, so I can spin that into pure ferrite. Why that spinning into pure ferrite? I will go and murder some rocks. Yes, I will. Uh, they're not too far away, to be fair. Or actually, I could start spinning them into the magnetized breed of ferrite, couldn't I, before I go murder some rocks? Lovely. Awesome. And uh, yeah, there we go. We will stick that over into there. That can spin into magnetized ferrite. Now, what I would say is I've been shooting every rock that I've seen. In every single one of these expeditions so far, I haven't seen any of the rocks pop out the ground like little crabs and run around yet. No, not had that happen. I saw somebody else doing it in their live stream and it did. Look, I'm, I'm scanning all of these over here. There's only one type of cave one, and it's the same one for the ceiling and for the ground. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on there, but I found another plant. I found like 18 odd plants. But I haven't found hardly any minerals. When you look at the log pages, like it says that there should only be like eight plants or something. I think they've got them swapped around. And it's a bit weird that you've got to find eight minerals, but you've only got to find six plants to pop badges. I think something squiff has happened. I really honestly don't think that there is anywhere near the quantity of rocks that they state was on this planet. I, I would I I don't think there's eight. I don't think there's eight different types of breed of rock on this planet. But if if, if you've managed to find all eight, let me know in the comments that you, you And where'd you find them? <laughs> it's like up into the tops of mountains. That's another badge that I can't seem to pop. Is the one that you've got to go to a pinnacle of a mountain. I've looked at all the mountains here. There's none that are super high, so I have no idea how I'm supposed to pop that one. So anyhow, yeah, we, we've got that frustration for phase four, I suppose, haven't we? But we're almost at the point that we might be able to take off. Pretty much everything now is fixed-cated. So yeah, um, technically I still need to build a fix one bit of tech, get in a larval core. Yeah, that means I've got to go to an abandoned building. I could up the scanner inside of my Exomech. And now that I start thinking about scanners in Exomechs, I'm thinking I might use my scanner to find myself a trading post. Because yes, you can use your scanner, the very first scanner inside of your Exomech, to find a trading post. If we head over to the trading post, I might be able to call my ship to a landing pad, build a base near to the trading post, and hopefully find an electromagnetic hotspot and a mining spot all near to the trading post. So I've got a place where I can sell my stuff, call my ship, fix my ship, and maybe harvest everything that I need uh, to pop the other badges in phase four, I think it's phase four. So yeah, because at the moment, I've got no way of getting those minerals or the rewards for the minerals. So what I might have to do is go and dig up a load of salvageable tech to actually unlock all the blueprints for the harvester, for the collector, for the cable, the pipe thing to connect them all together so I can actually do all of that new stuff and then actually get my ship off the planet. So yeah, I'm going to be doing a little bit with inside of the next couple of phases just to get myself where I need to be to get the blueprints that I should have got for scanning freaking rocks. Yes. So that's the whole thing that has scuppered my journey so far is finding eight minerals. 
Yeah, the rocks are rock freaking hard to find. Yeah, it's too hard. Yeah, not great. Um, first time around, they put us on a very rocky planet. It was easy. This planet, no rocks. It's not great. Yes, it's not rock and roll. Heck, no, it's not. Right, oh, so I'm just moving some of my tech out of here. Now, I was thinking when I take off, I will shoot all of the planet and fill up all my inventory. I go to take off. What happens? Nothing. What? Come again? Yes, I need Herox before I can take my ship off, but get this. If I go to a landing pad and use some navigational data, I can call my ship to the navigational pad. Because it said in the bottom corner earlier on that I could do that, or I could summon my ship to me. So it's no longer broken, yet I can't fly it, but it can automatically fly. It's a thing! I don't know why it's a thing. It is in this expedition, it's a thing. Right, well, we're going to be using my ExoMech again, and we're going to be heading over to that other buried cache. And hopefully, hopefully, we've been using it quite a lot now, the ExoMech. Hopefully it's going to pop the badge. It has! Cross Country badge has been popped located. Yes, 9,000 use in my little mech grasshopper. Yes, awesome. He does cover quite a lot of ground relatively quickly, this little grasshopper dude. Awesome. So now we're going to dig up the buried cache. I think I've got to go to this one and one more to do. Oh, a freaking plant just whipped me in the backside. So here we go. Let's dig this one up. Now, I don't think you get anything of ought in these things. I mean, I have had a golden nugget out of one, but I don't think they're going to drop Herox. I don't believe they do anyway. But yeah, you've got to dig these things up anyhow. Uh, so yeah, if you go over to whatever you dig, you just sort of press square on it and breaks it down. Look, I got some cadmium and I got some emeril, which is pretty nice. They will be handy and dandy for building out warp drives to get to different systems without even going to those planetary bodies. Very sneaky. Very sneaky indeed. Right, awesome. Well, let's go and hit this buried cache and see what we get in there. Yes, yeah, so I've had people correct me on where I say cache. Don't care. Yes, I do say computer cache. It's a bit odd, isn't it? Or if I've got cash in my pocket. But you can quite clearly see it's got an E on the end. It is a French word. And, uh, yeah, cache. Yeah, I'm going for cache. Brilliant. Anyway, we've had the same conversation twice now. We're going to dig this up. We're going to get it out. We're going to stick it in my pocket for a rainy day. Detectorist badge has been popped. Yeah, I think it was five of those things, wasn't it? Something like that. So where's the badge? Um, it's in phase four, exactly. Yeah, so I've done a few in phase four now. Done more in phase four than I've done in phase three. But sadly, I feel like I needed to do something just to sort of feel like I'm popping badges on this planet before I take off. So there we go. And, you know, why I'm on here, I might as well do it. Because I might take off this planet and not have this chance again. Because, you know, they might not be buried cache, caches on the next sort of system I jump to. Or whatever caches, I should say. Brilliant. Done. Uh, yeah, we've got a load of base bits that I'm not going to use. Simple as. Now, that little satellite dish, though, I can plonk that down. Even though I don't need to use it, because I can now call my exomech, because I've got an exo I've got an exomech bay on the planet, so I don't really need the satellite dish. But it's actually there as a given. I can just put it straight down, delete it, and get all the resources. Yes, thank you very much. So we go. Let's stick that down, and then I'm going to just delete it because I, I need the resources more than I actually need the um, whirly twirlyman thing at the moment. Anyway, so boom, I'm going to delete you. Yes, I am. And, uh, yeah, because I can call my ExoMech anyway, so I don't really need it, do I? And, you know, if they have given us the blueprints now, I believe, to stick all this stuff on a freighter, should we get a freighter. And uh, we can call us, as long as we've got a freighter in the system, we should be able to call the ExoMech in. But, you know, I could jump back to my old base, where I've got the actual ExoMech bay, delete it, and then just put it down on the next planet I go to. Problem solved! Yeah, that's if we do even need an exomech. I'm only using this exomech because the storms are so freaking frequent on this planet. It just gives you a bit of shielding. But here we go. I've now installed the wiring looms into here. And I've put in the very first level scanner. And when you go into this, it's surprising on what you can scan for. Heck yes, it is. So there we go. You can scan for a planetary outpost. And look at that. It's picked up a trading post first scan. Freaking get in. But guess how far away it is. One hour. Yeah, remember at the start of the video, I told you I spent two hours doing this. An hour of it was spent jumping across the planet. And I, I went to loads of different checkpoints and things and hit up, got a load of nav data. Check this out, though, as I'm jumping through the air. I get myself a surfboard <laughs> in way of a spaceship. Never had that happen in the whole time I've been playing. I actually stood on the spaceship and flew for a while. 
Yeah, I know it was just a couple of seconds, but yeah, that was pretty darn freaking awesome, so I left that in. Hey guys, so I've arrived at the trade po trading post. Now, I'm sure when I did this actual expedition first time around, when I got to a trading post, it popped the blueprints for all the different types of metal, including Herox. Didn't do it this time, so I think they negated that. And I think that the way that you get the Herox blueprints now is after you extract metal using your actual auto harvesters but to get your auto harvesters to get the blueprints you gotta scan those freaking six rocks or eight rocks or how many rocks it is it's eight rocks isn't it yeah twice what i've managed to find but you can do it the long way and go and dig up a load of salvageable tech now you're gonna need something like 10 for the actual harvester itself one for the actual cables to the supply pipes and then another 10 for the storage so i'm going to get 21 salvageable data and i'm probably going to need a little bit more just to get into the tree you know how it is how you got to unlock one thing to get into the next thing so i might need a little bit more but we'll have a look see what we need to do i still haven't popped rocket man and I, the hills are alive I, I, i'm not too sure where i'm going to find a hill freaking high enough before i actually warp out of this system i might just go and fly down into the atmosphere of every planet in this system and see if one has giant peaks yeah just to pop that badge so yeah i might be doing that in the next episode and uh, before i actually leave my base behind on this planet what i might do is just build a wall and a, a ceiling and get that rocket man badge yeah might just do it here rather than do it the correct way do it the sort of like the cheesy way just in case we can't find anything that's super duper high Heck no. So now I'm just scanning around to see if I can actually find an electromagnetic hotspot. When you're going around, it goes bling, 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 and then there'll be a duff sound that goes bonk. When it goes bonk, the dull sound, okay, that's not the exact sound it makes, but it makes a duller sound. As soon as it makes that dull sound, head that direction. And after a while, you'll start to pick up a reading. So just keep going in the direction that it came up. Look, I can call my ship. Can't fly it, can't take it off, but I can call it to me and it arrives here in seconds. Obviously nothing wrong with the flight system, so I don't know why I couldn't have flown the ship when I wanted to fly the ship. Anyway, we have arrived at our hotspot. We've arrived at our hotspot in this freaking bush. It's a massive bush, and I can't see what I'm freaking doing. But I've put a flag in there, well I've put the stake in the ground so I know exactly where it is. And I'm going to put down a base computer, and I'm going to claim this area of land as mine. Yes I am, and then I'm going to be putting down the, um, the electro magnetic -y things to get all the energy that i need and then i need to find a place where i'm going to be doing all the excavating but to get the excavating machines yeah i need the blueprints so that's where i'm going to have to go deal, dig up a load of salvageable tech because the only way yeah you're supposed to get the blueprints from scanning the rocks i know i've said it a few times but yes, it's just the pain. It is the pain. If one of you out there has managed, or multiple of you have managed, to scan these freaking rocks on this planet, please in the comments just say how many you found on the actual planet's surface, how many you found in water, and how many you found in caves. Yeah, just break it down a bit, just to help other people that are looking, because for the life of me, I don't know where to look. I've gone up mountains, I've gone in the oceans, I've gone in caves, and could I find more than one or two no no i couldn't because i've got four total and uh, i i consider myself great at finding rocks yeah well i'm like a, a geologist of no man's sky i'm not to be honest but yeah not great anyway so because i can't find many rocks or ferrite dust i just decide to glitch these freaking things in because otherwise you're going to be there forever trying to find the ferrite dust to make the metal plates for all of these and it's going to take you a month of sundays because there's hardly any rocks on this blinking planet even the ones that i have found they're freaking swaves apart you're talking like two or three football fields before you find a freaking rock to get your ferrite dust it's a pain in the neck so i'm glad that we've still got this little mini glitch in when you're when you're inside of your base confines so yes all you need to do is select the thing that you want to put down yeah even if you haven't got the parts and then you press triangle to go into wire mode on playstation you know you have to look at toggle wire mode in your control settings and then you just press the toggle wire mode and the place button as if you was going to place something down and if you do it right it's snap bang it's in you just get it straight away but no i can't get the rocks so i'm doing i kind of feel that this planet is bugged out in the way that they chose it because i honestly don't think it's got that many rocks or that many minerals and i know i keep banging on about it but it's yeah 
it's not good not good freaking frustrating but there we go i've managed to unlock the blueprints to get the mineral extractor now i need one for that pipe and yes they are 10 10 and 1 so you need 21 total to actually unlock it there was nothing in the tree above it so that's how many you need you need about 21 on the um uh, on, uh, on the salvage data to unlock these things once you've done that that's all good i put down a little solar panel just to mark x marks the spot so there we go i stuck that there brilliant and i'm going to put down a load more i'm going to cheese them in with that method that i mentioned before and that's just you know toggle wire mode and then r2 and triangle at the same time bang 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 and i tend to move the the little stick around as well as i'm moving it because it kind of triggers the wire point and sometimes it puts down one end and then it puts the glitched item at the other end uh yeah it, it, it kind of works for me i'll just do that just hammer it until i get a load of them then delete them clean up the wires and then put them down again right so now i'm just running the wires from my electromagnetic hotspots and i used batteries to extend my base range so every like 150 use i put down a battery and then yeah and then you can extend how far you can build just using one base computer so you don't have to use two base computers uh yeah there we go and sometimes when you use two base computers sometimes it stops the actual supply pipes or the electricity just cuts out on you so the best way to do it is to extend using batteries every 150 use there we go done awesome at least that's my method anyway i'll probably have a base builder correct me on that saying you can go up to 210 um well i go for 150 because otherwise i get confused and i lose where my batteries are as well so there's multiple reasons why i keep it at a slightly shorter distance in ewage um mainly because i'm a bit of a cretin and i find it easier to see them that way right okay well i've put all these pipes in and something i've also noticed is you, it's harder to put a pipe going to two locations at the same time so you have to be really careful how you link them up it has to be in a, like a, a singular loop otherwise if you've got two that are trying to, it just doesn't share the actual end connectors anymore so I, I, I messed about a bit but what i noticed is although these have only got one the actual storage silo has got four so i managed to connect three or four together and then link them to different areas on my my storage silo <laughs> it worked but it's messy it looks messy but i don't freaking care and i've got my 250 copper put that over into my inventory so you have to take it out of your collector and then it pops it and you, there you go i've got my 200 brilliant and now watch what pops up on the screen after i claim this badge okay so here we go go over there hit it boom okay and it just says alloy crafting blueprints it doesn't tell you what the alloys are that's Herox. There it is. Bang. We've got it, chums. We've got it. So that's how you get it. It's after you manage to set up all this auto harvesting stuff, and then you get it. The only trouble is to get the blueprints for the auto harvesting stuff, you've got to scan eight Erox, which is impossible. Look, there's a rock just there. But that's one of the only rocks that I found. It's a big freaking lump of rock. It should count as six. There we are. And then, boom, I would be okay. If that one counted as six, we'd be in the money. But no, it doesn't count as six. So we're not. So, anyway, I'm putting down a large refiner for no freaking reason, because I don't need it. You can actually craft the Herox inside of your actual exosuit. You don't have to craft it inside of a large refiner or medium refiner. I'm fairly sure we crafted it before in a medium refiner in the last, episode, in the last sort of time I've done this expedition. But anyway, I'm getting a load of ammonia, because you need ammonia to craft Herox. So here we go, we're digging that out of the ground. I shrunk my beam again by using L1, L1 that one of the shrink my beam. It takes longer to actually harvest the stuff out of the ground, but what you get out of the ground is going to be larger in volume. And we need to create two Heroxes. Two Heroxes you need to actually fix your ship, not just the one Herox, no. So here we go, I'm back over at my ship and I'm just crafting the Herox now. Boom, you can see that, I craft one Herox, not two. <laughs> I get all the way over to my ship and then I realise I need two Herox. I need two of them. But yeah, it's okay because I've got more than enough freaking ammonia. Yes, because i got an abundance of it. Because it's also good for charging up your hazardy protection. Right, so here we go. I'm just going to rename this base because I've also got another base on the same planet. I'm going to call this one Copper Farm. I'm going to jump back to my other base once I get to the station and delete it. Yeah, because I've got no need for it anymore. And yeah, I'm also going to get my 
Exomech Bay and delete that too. So I can then land on other planets and put it down if I need it. But I'm hoping I don't need my Exocraft anymore. Apart from maybe just to pop the scanner to find structures and buildings. Because I might upgrade the scanner so I can find an abandoned building. So I can get myself a larval core to fix the last bit of tech. And I think that last bit of tech allows me to jump systems. Look, I need three larval cores there, people. So yeah, I'm going to probably hit up my my scanner inside of my exomech because at the moment here's my exomech let's have a look what i can scan for because right now i can't scan for abandoned buildings inside of the exomech i can scan for structures and i can just pray and hope that it pops up um, so you can do depots you can do secure facilities and uh, sometimes on secure facility no that's only going to find the observatories and the manufacturing facilities isn't it it's not going to find an abandoned building but we have got to chart oh shit i've done all the charting we only had to chart five places now they reduced that i'm fairly sure it was more than that the first time we've done this expedition so they reduced that down to five i think so we've already popped that badge which was nice and easy but yes yeah, so they've given us a shed load of cartography maps though haven't they freaking loads of them and i guess now for no real real reason i guess but yeah we'll see what there is to so i haven't read too far into all the other phases so although i've done a little bit of phase four i haven't really looked at phase five and i kind of just keeping that one in wraps at the moment and uh yeah i'll come to that when i get to it so yeah i like to try and deliver these in phases so if people are searching for a pacific mission they know roughly where to look and then if they see my my screen come up and they can see that i've already done a phase then yeah they can just jump back to the previous playlist, well, the previous episode in the playlist. Right, so now I've got to do this low flying. You can't hit any trees or obstacles. So what I would suggest is just head over until you get to a massive lake or a swathe of ocean and then just fly across the top of the surface of that. So maybe just lock your compass point onto, say, north and just carry on flying north until you hit the sea. And, uh, yeah, and just keep flying then because there's nothing for you to hit. Just fly for 15 seconds, and the badge is yours. Now, because we're flying all the way out to sea, I figure, well, there's one more sea crit critter that I need to scan to make that 10 on the fauna. I'll land on this little island, jump in the ocean where it's nice and deep, and we'd also see if there's any minerals in there. Guess what I find? Shared loads of new plants, which I've already got, like, 15, 20-odd plants already scanned because this planet's littered in them. Don't find any more rocks. Don't find the last underwater fauna. And I spent an extra 30 minutes looking for the blasted thing. So that was a waste of time. So yeah, I'm just going to jump to another planet. Now looking at this actual system, there is there is a nice lush planet here. Yeah, a star bramble world that seems to have infrequent storms. So I'm going to go over to the lush world because I think it's well deserved after that swamp planet. That swamp planet was a shite. It's a complete git because it doesn't have rocks and the fauna on it are a pain in the neck to freaking find and none of them are overly interesting other than that antler one that I found. Oh, there, there was one little mousy type one that was all rainbowy colours. I've never seen colours like it on a creature. It was really pretty. But yeah, it was it was also hideous at the same time in its genetic makeup. But the colours were pretty. Right, so we're landing here and let's see how long it takes me to find four rocks. Yeah, I'm not going to speed this footage up. No, there's a rock there. There's one as soon as I get out of my ship. That's the sort of planet we needed. Right, and, um, oh, look, look, just over here, look, there's there's another freaking rock. Uh, it looks just like the other rock, but you know what? They're two species of rock. Yeah, that's nice. Awesome. <laughs> and you can already see that there's some bigger rocks in the distance that I'm going to be able to hit up in a sec. So, yeah, nice. Oh, I noticed something else that's a little bit weird. If you've actually got your terrain manipulator out, and then you try to delete something when you're building a base, it doesn't let me delete anything. It's a little bit weird. I have to go back out of the build camera, out of build mode, change back to a mining tool or my bolt caster, then go back into build mode. It won't let me build, well, delete things, in, um, if I've got my terrain manipulator. There we go. We've now just hit up... Two, two other types of rock. Oh no, I just scanned a bush. I didn't scan the freaking rock, did I? All right, so let's just get past this freaking bush, and then I can scan that big rock in the horizon. And guess what? That is four rocks found in a minute or two of being on this new planet. Bang, done. It should have been that easy on the first planet. It really should. I digress. And we've got one creature just sitting there. Scan that. Popped both badges magically. Boom. We're in the money. Excellent. That's phase three. Done. 
I thought phase three would be the easiest one. I really did. I thought it would be super duper easy quick. <laughs> no! No! It's been one of my worst times in No Man's Sky ever. I'm not going to lie. That was freaking horrendous. Hello, games. You've got a lot to freaking answer for. You really have. Now, you deserve a kick in the shins. You do. You do. <laughs> because that was painful and it was frustrating and it was hellish. Hellish, I tell thee. Yeah, so all that nav data I've wasted, because now when I pop these badges, I'm... Okay, I, uh, oh great, fine. I got 15 salvage data back. I used 21 to get all the things that I should have got for scanning eight rocks. Yeah, that's um done my nut in a little, as you could probably tell. Anyway, let's just hope that phase four is less, less squiffy than phase three. Until next time, people, you guys have been awesome. See you again soon. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, please hit a like and a subscribe. And I'd like to say a massive great big thank you to all of my backers over on Patreon and over on YouTube membership. Thanking you, backers. And if you want to support this channel, just don't skip the adverts. That throws revenue down my avenue. Or yeah, just stay with Captain Steve a little bit longer and hit something on this screen. There's merch here now too.